Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Juliana and in today's video I'm going to talk to you about Breakfast at Tiffany's by Truman Capote. So this is a Portuguese edition. The translation, the, a literal translation of the title in Portuguese would be Luxury Doll. And for those who have read the book, I think I can agree in some extent to the title, but I don't know why. I don't particularly like when um, publishers alter the titles of the original. I know it's supposed to, supposedly for a commercial and sales purpose, so that it's more appealing in the country. But still, I don't like it very much when they change so much from the original title, but you know. So this book was published in 1958 and this is a novella. And talking a bit about Truman Capote, Capote, I think that's how you say it. I intend to read a biography by him of him I suppose that won't be for the near future so because you know they are expensive and I want it in a physical form uh, but talking a bit about his life his career so he was born in September 30 1924 and he died August 25 1984 he was an American novelist, screenwriter, playwright and actor. Several of his short stories, movies, uh, novels, I'm sorry, and plays have been praised as literal, literary classics, including the novella Breakfast at Tiffany's, this one, and the true crime novel In Cold Blood, that's from 1966 which he labeled a non-fiction novel. In Cold Blood is another book by Truman that I want to read, but I don't know when that's going to happen, but you know, it's a desire of mine, so. His works have been adapted into more than 20 films and television dramas. So, I know a bit about his life uh, story or his story life. Uh, he didn't have an easy life and he died um, a bit in loneliness and such. But as I was saying, I want to read his biography to know more and be more contextualized about his life. So, there you go. Now, talking about Breakfast at Tiffany's, this is a story that is narrated by a man that we understand um, is a writer wannabe uh, and or he's, he's, he's pursuing a career of a writer, perhaps that's more put together, uh, and he moved to New York and he is in his early 30s I think and he is moving to uh, of a building that he calls Brownstone building. I read this in Portuguese so I don't know if my translation is the correct one but I'm trying to give you more or less the the details but perhaps the the words are not the original ones but I think the idea is there <laughs> but the story begins with this man that we never know the name that's a curiosity of this book of this novella um, is talking to Joe Bell that is a owner of a bar a corner bar in um, a street nearby his building where he used to go to get drinks so he's contacted by Jobel and he's talking about the whereabouts of Holly 
Golightly. Golightly. Holy Golightly. That we understand was the neighbor of our narrator in this brownstone building. And after that, after that conversation and uh, the clues of where she perhaps was seen and by whom another neighbor, a Japanese neighbor uh, of them both, of the brownstone building in Africa, because he was traveling this Japanese man and he encountered um, a person, a man, that does uh, sculptures and one of the sculptures, the features were very like this holy golightly. <laughs> I'm sorry. And so he brings the news to Jobel and Jobel is sharing the news with our narrator. And then we have them both in a divagation of how Holly could be in this moment, where she could be, with whom, in what condition, in what situation. Maybe she's in prison, maybe she's married and have kids. So that type of conversation. And from, from that point on, this novella will we will digress, so the narrator will digress in time and show us the first moments or the first encounters or better, the first situations where he met Holly. So how she met her in the building because he moved to the building where she was living and she had a habit of ringing the bell of the Japanese man because she always forgot the keys of the entrance of the building. But then the Japanese man got angry and said that he didn't want her to, because you know, she will do that 2 a.m. in the morning, 3 a.m., 4 a.m., you know. And so what she did was she uh, began ringing the bell of the new neighbor our narrator and so he knew uh, that hour that he wouldn't be any of his friends because he didn't have a lot of friends to begin with and he knew it, it was her and she would always apologize and say she forgot the key um, and so from that point on we are having a um, description of the various situations that will lead to a conversation conversations between those two our narrator and holly because you know our narrator supposedly is the main character right but the focus point is in this holly colightly so she is the um, in a way she kind of is the main character although it's not given the role in an um, obvious way and so she starts calling our narrator Fred because Fred is, is the name of her brother and her brother is in the war so this is passing during I think the second world war and she calls him Fred, so we become to call him Fred as well. But our narrator, as long as, pe as, as long as the time passes and he has the opportunity to visit her apartment, her apartment is full of boxes, like she had moved, moved in recently. And she has a cat who doesn't have a name so she and he wants to know more about her life in not a um, obvious way but he, he becomes intrigued by her 
but she is averse to anything surrounding her past life and she says she hates people who gossip or want to know about her life and so everything that we learn about Holly is that she doesn't want to make roots anywhere else or anywhere I mean uh, she is like a social butterfly she gives parties in her apartment all the time uh, another neighbor a woman is furious <laughs> because of it and she wants to call the police every time and something also that we um, follow is that Holly is always accompanied by older men and in a conversation that Holly has with our narrator she even um, confesses that she receives money to visiting an uh, old man from the Mafia in prison and she is passing his, his, uh, his niece to go there every Thursday in the morning to you know keep him company supposedly but then when she get, gets out of the visit she has to call his lawyer and tell something about the weather that we understand it's like a code that supposedly is for checking if she really was there but that's a bit badly told and he the, our narrator gets worried about her but she discards the thing and she moves on on the, the conversation uh, and she is very detached from people detached from things you know she's like I was saying, a social butterfly and so this whole thing it's like um, a like and dislike of this character because everyone around her thinks she's fascinating she, she's like 19 years old and there's a point in time where our narrator will have um, vital uh, participation in revealing her past and where she came from and her background and her childhood and we will get to know her better there and understand perhaps why she is how she is detached and because she wants all the attention and she likes to have the attention of people and be um, worshipped, we can say. And she has men falling in her feet, doing everything for her. And powerful men with contacts and resources. Um, and we don't really understand why she gets this fashion she gets this this fascin fascination from other people because it's not like she's um, you know a, a impetuous woman or mentally brilliant or something like that but she has a, a natural charm that magnetizes people our narrator is in that as well they have some time apart they kind of um, fall apart a bit but they come together again further on and there's a point where she has to leave, the, leave the New York and she, there's a scene where she um, has the cat but she has to go away, right? And she stops the cab and puts the cat out of the cab and says to him to go away and then they go on but uh, a few meters later she regrets it and she turns to our narrator and says that he has to find the cat we have their um, hint of her sentimentalism a bit of attachment a bit of roots that she grew 
although she didn't want to at first sight. So we have here, because you know, she will say things and she will do things that you are like, you're a bad person. And some of the men that are um, surrounding her also say they are, she is an imposter, but she is a true imposter. So she is, she is original or something. And they still go after her. Is kind of funny in a way. So she is a grey um, character. She has a grey character, you know. So this is not like um, she. In the end of the story, she will not have um, come around situation or a redemption situation or behavior you know so she will be faithful to her personality and her type of behavior throughout the book yeah i really enjoy this 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 reading oh something that she talks about is the um, how it, how does she call it she talks to fred about her mean reds that is something that she feels with some consistency and the only way that she can calm those sad mean reds is to go to the to Tiffany's and see the jewelry and so on and so that's why the book is called Breakfast at Tiffany's so these mean reds we suppose is like um, anxiety crisis you know or i i wouldn't say panic attacks but maybe more anxiety and and it was kind of funny the way that because she's very materialistic although she doesn't keep anything with her because as i was saying she doesn't want attachment so our narrator will will be like a puppy going around Holly and it's really funny how this whole thing is surrounding Holly but at the same time the main character supposedly is not her you know and the writing of Truman in this book in this novella for me was brilliant um, I never was bored I think he has a way of describing things and um, he has a beautiful writing, at least my opinion. I was reading other book, another book and I was getting really bored but when I picked this one up it was totally one, 180 uh, turn and I, I loved it. This is very quick to read, uh, it's not boring at all, the writing is beautifully done, so I think you, you will really enjoy this one and you will be very intrigued by this story. And yeah, let me know what you thought about this book. I like to, to hear your opinions and if you have other insights about this plot. Although this is not very much a plot driven, it's more like a character driven, but I loved it. So please let me know what your thoughts, what you thought about this novella. And yeah, subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Leave a like, it helps, it helps a lot the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting there whenever I have a book review to do or anything else. And I see you on the next one.